I've, of course, uh, as has any most lawyers and certainly most leaders of law firms have, have at least uh, uh, followed the Dewey case uh, to some degree. Uh, and uh, personally, uh, I knew a number of the lawyers and uh, it's uh, sad in, in many ways. Uh, a lot of talent was at that firm um, and I liked some of the people personally uh, that were at the firm. Uh, uh, the only thing I would say is that, uh, number one, uh, rumors of our involvement were greatly exaggerated, <laughs> um, number one. Uh, number two, um, the, um, I think the messages that are coming out of there, perhaps to make people feel better themselves, uh, tend to focus on criminality uh, or bad acts by a few people uh, that were in management positions. And I look at it and say, I don't know if those people did bad acts, let alone criminal acts. Uh, but uh, that's for a court and a jury uh, to decide. Uh, but I, I, I think it's, it's unfortunate that so many people look at it and that's all they see. Because actually, even if you take the worst of uh, of what you've her heard in the press or heard in the court pa or read in the court papers and take it as true. Um, it seems like those things occurred near the end of their existence. A lot of things happened before the end. Uh, it looked like those were the things that happened to cover up uh, the bad condition that they were in, even if they did happen. So the thing that's being uh, ignored are all the things that probably a number of firms did uh, that were similar. They just were, uh, you know, uh, unlucky uh, about the uh, number of things and, and maybe they made some extra bad decisions. Why is it sad? Because it is an entire business model that was the problem. The idea of money and greed and uh, figuring out how much partners can make uh, this year as being the be all and end all of existence for the partners and for management. The idea of growth for growth's sake as being the key business driver uh, neither of those things does a thing for clients. Uh, and at the end of the day, if whatever it is you're doing to run your firm and to have a strategy for your business is not completely related to what is going to add some kind of value uh, to your clients, there's something wrong with your strategy. Uh, all of the things that are being alleged were based upon boosting this particular year's payments to your own partners. Second thing I would say is building through mergers the way that they did uh, and focusing not on culture but on money as the glue is time after time been shown not to work. Uh, you see today some firms doing the same thing. Maybe you see it more sitting in my shoes when you're competing for talent or you, you hear what some of your own partners are being offered sometimes. Um, and believe me, uh, if Dewey did 10 things wrong, and I'm not talking about criminal things, I'm talking about their basic business model. If they did 10 things wrong, there are plenty of firms today doing eight of them. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, multi-year guarantees of compensation irrespective of firm performance, irrespective of your own performance, uh, big debt. Uh, and let me talk about debt for a minute. Uh, you know, a lot of firms run around saying we have no debt. Uh, we're not like Dewey. When all they've actually done is they 
uh, reduced the firm debt, sometimes eliminated the firm debt. But the way they did it was they asked their partners to put in a lot more capital. The amount of partner capital in firms has greatly ballooned during the period that the level of firm debt has decreased. In fact, as of about a year or so ago, it was the first time in, I think, recorded history that the total amount of partner debt to pay capital exceeded firm debt for big law firms. Think about that. So what have they done? They've moved the debt to their partners. So maybe it's true that that means that the firms won't go bankrupt as quickly. But you're still bringing in lots of debt. Now, why is that? We are not building roads, the last I checked. We're not building bridges or tunnels or major factories. Why do we need so much money to be invested in our firms, to run our businesses? You don't. And so uh, I hate to uh, you know, uh, make this point, but because uh, it sounds critical of others, but it just my, my main point is when you look at the Dewey case, let's forget about whether somebody uh, cooked the books. I hope they didn't uh, for their sake, but that was at the end. What got them to that point was a business model that did whatever they could to take money from wherever they could get it to pay partners. These guys that were doing it didn't make that much money. There were partners there making a lot more money. Um, and, and, and so look at our own firms. If you're doing the same kind of thing in your firm, you may not be doing these other things, but those models don't last for long. Because where is that capital going? If it isn't going to pay compensation directly, it's probably going indirectly. And you're, you're doing some of the same kinds of things. And, and that's why I say it's sad. Because, you, again, shouldn't be, you should not be spending that money on, uh, on, on, on too many things in these firms. And the amount of capital I hear that people have invested in firms. So we have kept our capital down, and we still have no long-term debt. And, and we're very proud of that fact, because we've certainly kept growing. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the Dewey situation, uh, as the Finley Kumpel situation years ago, for people old enough to remember, uh, again, another sh uh, stark evidence of the fact that in a professional services organization, whether you show respect and trust and camaraderie and you kind of like each other and you know each other and all of those things, that's really what it's about. Uh, it's, it's ultimately not about money. And so when we look at those AMLAW charts and Steve Brill, wherever he may be today, um, you know, I know he's long gone from American lawyer, um, but, uh, you know, and I know the American lawyer has been incredibly successful in many ways, and I read it all the time, uh, and I'm not being critical, you know, because actually, you know, I've seen some of the debates that law firms have had with the American lawyer, and I laugh. It's not the American lawyer's fault if a law firm decides to manage itself uh, because of, uh, of, a, of a survey that is published by the American lawyer. That is not the American lawyer's fault. That's the law firm's fault for not being able to manage itself using that as one of many criteria that it uses. And if it's not strong enough to help its partners understand and its recruits understand what that means in the context of its firm, for example, uh, and these varines are actually uh, the funniest of all, because a few of those have been complaining about the American lawyer. <laughs> um, when you think about a varine, which combines all of its revenues, uh, and which get reported to the American lawyer, uh, and moves them up that list on revenues, even though they're not one business, and then complains that they include 
uh, you know, the, the uh, lower profits from some of the less profitable offices, and it lowers them on parts of those lists. Uh, you know, it's, you can't make this stuff up.